The train has been moving forever. I can still feel the low rumble beneath me and the sticky leather seat. But other than that, I'm emotionally and physically numb. I'm tired and sorry and sad. A 16-year-old runaway who hasn't thought straight before she's bolted. Sure, there was a reason for me running away, but now it feels silly and desperate. I feel so naive now, and my dull eyes perceived everything as gray and drab, colorless and meaningless. Even the meaning of life was becoming questionable to me now. It had all begun about five days ago at the orphanage in Las Vegas, where I had lived as long as I can remember. The last of my spirit and vigor had finally leaked out of me once and for all. It was such a hard place, such a sad, run-down edifice, barely fit for children to live in. I was shocked that it had even taken this long. Throughout the years in there, Depression and loneliness had eroded away all the sparkle in my eyes, the joy I had held on to, and the love for life inside me that had once been so potent and fierce long before. I was, as a result of my spiritlessness, beginning to feel the need to move, to be slightly to reckless, to do something adventurous that could possibly renew the reason to breathe, to live, to exist. Longing for action had taken over. A streak of wildness had taken the spotlight in my heart. It sparked something inside of me that was brave and foolish at once. And then, within twenty minutes, beneath the silent, velvety curtain of the night, I had crept stealthily past the unknowing headmistress's partially ajar door. I could hear her heavy snoring, stifled only by her thick pillow, and out of the stuffy, hot building into the cool, fresh air. I had boarded one of the late-night trains near Las Vegas and was soon speeding down the tracks toward California. I hadn't thought of what to do or where I was going beforehand. I just had to get out. I couldn't lie low at the orphanage for just one more day. I had been riding the train for almost a full 14 hours. I stared out the dirty window, smudged by gritty fingerprints of filthy street wanderers, at the steady lights, which were beginning to shine under the darkening sky. I had thirty dollars crumpled up in my hand, and nothing else to keep me alive and well. Now that I was riding down the tracks in this train did I realize how silly this decision was to run away. But sleepiness overcame my thoughts, and I decided that for now I could sleep since there was nothing else I could really do at the moment. When I awoke, the sun was shining, beating down on me. I looked out the window and saw that it was relatively high in the sky, now glowing above a blazing stretch of desert wilderness. I sighed and cursed myself for sleeping so long. Dang it, Ellie, you accursed girl. But after a minute, I promptly forgave myself. I guess that sleeping had done me some good. Where are we? We're in Southern California, about four miles away from a little town. Where are you headed? I... I... I, I don't... I don't know. I'm not really headed anywhere. Tell you what. I'm... I'm going home. To the little town. Um, the train will stop in a few minutes. Why don't you go home with me and stay there until you can figure out what you want to do? Um, okay. Thank you. Why not? And in a few moments, we were getting off the train and driving in her car toward her house. This was the first real house I had been to in at least three years. The town was relatively small. I watched the activity out the window and saw several people working, moving around, taking walks, casually living life. When we arrived at her house, we got out of the car.
we're here, Ellie. We made it. So, this is your house? Yeah. Yeah. We made it. Are you ready to go in? Let's go. So, what's your name? I haven't even told her. Um, my name is Ellie. I'm a high diver. She's gonna ask what that means. They always do. You are? Are you serious? Me too. I love them. Aren't they so amazing? Wait, are you talking about... I mean, not like a... Not like an actual high diver. I mean, like a... Like a... Like a fan of Jason Reeves and Nellie Joy? Yeah. Yeah. Like that. You really know the pop duo High Dive Heart? Seriously? I love them. They are amazing. I know they're not very well known yet, but that will change, I think. They really are incredible. I mean, like, throughout this hardship, their music has really helped me keep going. It really puts life in me when I feel like I don't have it. True, they are amazing that way, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I like them. And you do too, so that's great. Yeah. Do you like Colby Cali too? You're a high diver. I have to show you something. Real quick. Come on. Okay. Are you ready, Ellie? Yeah. What is it? Okay. Look. Colby Kelly signed for me when I met her. Whoa, Erin. Ellie, are, are you okay? Um, I think I need to sit down or something. Are you, are you okay? Ellie, do you need to sleep or something? I know, you need some food. I'll go get you something to eat, okay? Um, I don't think that's what I need. Lay down on the couch in the other room. Um, I will. I will go get you something to eat. Okay. Okay. I'll be right back, Ellie. Uh, okay. Touch it. It's Aaron's personal property. Of course I can't touch it. Colby Kelly signed it. It's special to her. Touch it. Touch it. Oh, I kind of... I want to touch it. I really want to touch it. Touch it. Touch it.
opened up the secret wonder. Now go down the stairs. Thank <laughs> you.